Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'm going to be covering Vayne, the Night Hunter. Let us hunt those who have fallen to darkness. Alright, so let's start this guide off by looking at Vayne's pros and cons. So right off the top, Vayne is a strong hyper carry with very high snowball potential. She's one of those champions that as long as she can make it into the late game with just a little bit of peel, she can take down an entire team. She also gets some pretty good mobility from her tumble ability, which can be used to dodge skill shots. When you combine her really good mobility and her high damage, which by the way, some of it is true damage, it gives her her really good 1v1 potential. She does also have a pretty high skill cap as well, so the outplay potential is pretty high, and she never really gets boring. Now with all of this said, however, she does have a pretty mediocre lane phase. It's not like winning lane phase is impossible, but you do have a lot of hard matchups. This is pretty much due to your low base range and health, and the fact that you are hard to master. Either way though, as long as you can make it to the lane phase and get into the mid and late game where you can do a lot of damage, you have the chance to carry the game. For your masteries, you want to go 18 ferocity and 12 cunning, grabbing Warlord's Bloodlust as your keystone mastery. This is definitely the best keystone on Vayne because she really makes great use of that extra mobility and of course healing. You do also have the option of going for Fervor of Battle if you want some increased damage instead, but honestly Vayne does so much damage already that it's not necessary at all and you make much better use of Warlord's Bloodlust. For the rest of your masteries, you pretty much just want to focus on increasing your damage as much as possible, and also grabbing just a little bit increased sustain. For my rune page, I like to stay very generic and get attack damage reds, armor yellows, magic resist blues, and attack speed quints. I'm sure you've seen this rune page many many times, and well, it's because it's the best one on an AD carry. The attack damage and attack speed makes last hitting and trading a little bit more effective, and armor and magic resist of course increase your tankiness so you're not taking a ton of damage in the lane. If you felt like you were against a really easy matchup, then you also have the option of going for Glyphs of Attack Speed. It's a pretty good option as well because it will increase your damage, but if there is a lot of AP champions on the enemy team, make sure you take that magic resist. For your summoner spells, you'll want to stick with the normal AD carry setup and get Flash and Heal. Flash is a 100% requirement on Vayne since she's a squishy AD carry and it can save your life throughout the game multiple times. You can also use it offensively to get an angle on the enemy champion so you can condemn them into a wall to stun them and then follow up with the rest of your damage for a pretty damn easy kill. Now heal is also a requirement because it can be used to save both yourself and your teammates. The bonus movement speed on activation is also great for escaping or chasing if you do need that extra speed boost. Sure Vayne does already have her passive for movement speed but this can give you even more. Now we're going to look at Vayne's abilities starting with her passive Night Hunter which is great for its added mobility. Vayne gains 30 bonus movement speed when moving towards a nearby visible enemy champion, and if she is in her ultimate final hour, Night Hunter's bonus movement speed is tripled to 90. You can also really easily tell if you do have this effect because you will have a little glowing purple circle under you. So first, this is obviously a really strong ability for chasing. Since you will be of course moving towards that nearby visible enemy champion, you're going to have the bonus movement speed and usually going to catch up pretty easily. If you have your ultimate activated, this is going to be even easier because you're going to have 90 movement speed. It also has the chance to be pretty solid in team fights if you are trying to reposition, but keep in mind you have to be moving towards those enemy champions. It won't be giving you any added movement speed for the duration that you are moving backwards. Its main strength is for chasing. Your Q ability is tumble and this gives you some really nice added damage and it's really good for dodging skill shots. When activated, Vayne quickly rolls towards the cursor's location, causing her next basic attack within 7 seconds to deal bonus physical damage. Tumble can critically strike and interacts with critical strike damage. Tumble will also reset Vayne's basic attack timer, and when used in final hour, Tumble turns Vayne invisible for 1 second on cast. The cooldown also goes down 1 second every time we put a point in the ability, so we basically always want to max this ability first. Against tanky teams, however, you may want to max your W. So first, in team fights, you want to try to dodge as many skill shots as possible with this ability. You do have hard matchups, so this will be pretty crucial. Since this does also reset your basic attack timer, it's also great in trades and last hitting. If you need to get 2 CS really quickly, you can attack, tumble, attack, or if you want to get off a really quick trade, do the same. Attack, tumble, attack. When you're using your tumble in your ultimate, you want to try to reposition quickly so you're very hard to lock down and kill. A vein that knows how to use the invisibility properly to reposition is going to be very very hard to deal with and you can kill entire teams because they can't even see you half the time. Vayne's W is Silver Bolts and this gives you some really nice true damage which is based off the target's maximum health. Passively, Vayne's basic attacks and condemn apply a Silver Bolt stack for 3 seconds up to 3 times attacking a new enemy will remove all stacks from the previous target. 
The third stack consumes them all to deal bonus true damage, and this has a minimum threshold capped at 200 against monsters. This will deal up to 12% of the target's maximum health, so that's why Vayne is known as a tank killer. If the enemy drafts a really tanky team, just picking Vayne can give you more than enough damage to make it through all the targets, as long as you do get some peeling. As a Vayne player, you're going to have to get used to attacking a single target over and over again, instead of switching, because you do need those three attacks to get off your silver bolts. Just remember though, this is really easy to pull off though, as long as you use your tumble to reset your attack timer, and you can use your condemn as well to proc the third stack and push them away at the same time. Vayne's E ability is Condemn, and this is great for its crowd control, or its self-peeling, if required. When activated, Vayne fires a heavy bolt at the target unit, dealing physical damage, knocking them back 470 units, and applying them a silver bolt stack. If the target collides with a wall, they take the same physical damage again, and are stunned for 1.5 seconds. So of course first, you want to try to push people into walls whenever you can, because it's basically a free trade. You should be able to easily get off your silver bolt stack, and take absolutely no damage in the process. If somebody's jumping onto you in a team fight, you can also use this ability just to push them away. Of course though, if it is possible, push them into the wall so they are stunned. Just remember as well in trades that this does apply a stack of silver bolts, so you can attack a target twice and then push them away with this ability and still proc the silver bolts. Also, when you are comfortable with the ability, you can also use your flash to get an angle on an enemy champion and then condemn them into a wall so you can go in for a really easy engagement. Vayne's ultimate is final hour, and it's really solid for its increased damage and the fact that you can use your tumble to stealth around. When activated, for a duration up to 12 seconds, Vayne gains bonus attack damage as well as bonus effects on both Night Hunter and Tumble. This of course was the 1 second stealth on your tumble and the bonus movement speed from your passive. It also gives you between 30 and 70 AD, which is a pretty nice chunk of AD. As soon as the fight breaks out, you can pop your ultimate, then use your tumble to quickly go into stealth and try to reposition. If possible, when it is safe, try to get an angle on an enemy champion that is pretty squishy and push them into a wall with your Condemn, and delete them pretty much instantly. Be very careful however, because Vayne is very squishy, and if somebody gets on top of you for long enough, you're gonna die really really quickly. You'll have an absolute ton of mobility from your stealth tumble and that bonus movement speed from your passive, so moving around the team fight shouldn't be too much of an issue when you are in your ultimate. You can also surprise people when you are out of vision, pop your ultimate and then use your tumble to move towards them, pop out a stealth and delete them with all that bonus movement speed that you will have. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then you'll want to focus on maxing your Q ability, tumble. This will give you a lot more mobility and will really increase your damage. If however you're against a very tanky lineup and the support champion is a tank as well, then you may want to consider maxing your W first instead. In most cases, however, I will max it second behind the Q ability. Then for last, you want to max your E ability, Condemn. Just make sure you take one point in the ability early on so you can actually stun people against the wall and peel for yourself. Now let's look at a couple support synergies, and first up is Maokai. With the Maokai, you guys are going to have an absolute ton of damage and a lot of crowd control. If he can land his Twisted Advance on somebody against the wall, you can tumble in, condemn them to the wall, and get a very very easy kill with all of your damage. You guys definitely don't have the best sustain however, so try to be as aggressive as possible and get the lane snowballing. Next up I have Janna who's going to be a lot more passive than something like a Maokai. She does however have some really strong shields and a ridiculous amount of peeling, so she's going to be able to keep you rather safe throughout the lane and of course teamfights. With a Janna, your win condition is pretty simple. Make it to the late game, farm as much as possible, and then carry the game from there. Try to use their shields to effectively trade with the enemy bot lane, but remember you don't have a ton of kill pressure with the Janna, play the lane more passively. Next up is one of the best supports for solo queue, Sona. With a Sona you're going to have some pretty effective trades because of her Q ability and the increased damage she gives you, and of course some really solid sustain from her W ability. You're already a pretty mobile AD carry, but when you combine the movement speed from Sona's E, you're going to be even more mobile, and moving around teamfights shouldn't be that big of an issue. Focus on getting as much farm as possible, this should be relatively easy because she will be zoning people with her Q ability, and if she does ultimate, then it's time to go in for an engagement. Last here, I'm going to be touching on Soraka. With a Soraka, you'll want to try to be a little bit more aggressive and trade as much as possible, as long as they're going to be somewhat even. As long as she keeps healing you up and keeps herself sustained with her Q ability, it's going to be a pretty easy lane phase, and winning trades is going to be relatively simple. You're not going to have a ton of kill pressure however, so pick up as much farm as you can and make it into the late game where you can easily carry your team. Vayne can do fine in the lane phase against some AD carries, but generally it will be the time that you're weakest in the game. You'll generally want to play more passively early on than most AD carries and focus on getting as much farm as you can. 
If the opportunity does present itself, however, make sure you condemn somebody into a wall and get off your silver bolts for a very effective trade. Remember that your tumble can be used to quickly get off two auto attacks and condemn can be used to use the third hit if you do need to proc that silver bolts. Once you do acquire your BF sword and have some points in your tumble, your trades will be much stronger so try to trade more later on in the game. If you make it to the teamfight stage even or ahead of the enemy AD carry, then you've set yourself up for success. You're a very strong late game hyper carry and with some solid positioning you can take out entire teams if you get at least some peeling. After the fight has started, use your final hour for its increased movement speed and damage. You'll then want to use your tumble for navigating throughout the fight. This of course will stealth you during your ultimate, so try to move unpredictably and dodge as many skill shots as possible. Remember however that you are still a very squishy AD carry, so do not overcommit in a team fight and stay safe. Now let's look at some of your hard matchups, and first up of course is Caitlyn. She's got the highest base attack range of all the AD carries, so she's going to be a pretty big pain in the ass for you. I would recommend starting a door and shield against her so you have some regeneration and can actually deal with her poke. Once you do get to the late stages of the game you can easily destroy a Caitlyn so try to make it there and just be safe in the early game and get as much farm as possible. Next to her I have Draven who's another champion that can bully the absolute shit out of you in the early game. Yet again you're going to want to start with a door and shield and play more passively because his axes are really going to hurt you. If possible try to stop him from picking up his axes as much as you can with your condemn ability. This can reduce the stacking of his gold from his passive, but make sure you have Condemn whenever your support wants to go for an engage or you're about to get a gank from your jungler. The last one I'm going to touch on here is Twitch. Now he's not a big time lane bully in the early game like the other two champions, but he's really really strong in the late game, to the point where he can even out carry something like a Vayne. This is one of the few matchups where you really want to try to get an advantage in the early game so you can snowball instead of him snowballing on you. If you do make it to the late game and you're both really big champions then you want to try to stun him against a wall at all costs. A good twitch will be able to destroy an entire team in his ultimate in just a couple seconds so stopping this is really important. Alright with all that stuff covered let's finish this off with our item build which starts with either a Doran's Blade Health Potion and a Warding Totem or a Doran's Shield Health Potion and a Warding Totem. If I feel like the bot lane combo isn't going to be that hard for me then I will start with the Doran's Blade but if they're really going to be pokey and I'm going to struggle at last hitting then you got to go for the Doran's Shield. For my core build I like to go for a Static Shiv, Infinity Edge, and a Phantom Dancer. I do however like to get a BF Sword before I get the Static Shiv just for the damage and it does work really nice with your tumble. This core build will give you a decent amount of attack damage, lots of attack speed and crit, and increased crit damage as well. With your tumble skill max which does work from your crit you're going to be doing an absolute ton of damage. Now if you do feel like you need some early sustain or you are against a very tanky team then you may want to rush a blade of the ruined king. In a normal game it's definitely not as strong as the core build here but it's still very effective against tanky teams and if you also max your w ability you will be shredding the absolute shit out of them. For your boot options usually I'll go for berserker greaves to increase my damage but if you're against a high ad team then you can also go for ninja tabbies to reduce their damage. For the item pool, we first have the Mercurial Scimitar. This is a really solid item because of the attack damage and lifesteal, but it's even better because of the built-in QSS. You will be able to use this item to break a crowd control, which can be the difference in Vayne living through a teamfight. If you were looking for lifesteal but wanted more damage, then you could go for the Bloodthirster. It does have the defensive shield built into it as well, so it is a pretty damn solid item on Vayne. Of course, like the rest of the AD carries out there, you could also go for a Guardian Angel, and it is pretty much core. Coming back to life after you die is a pretty busted thing to do, especially in the late game. If you felt like you needed some armor penetration then you could go for an LDR or a Mortal Reminder. I don't take these items too often on Vayne because of her built in true damage but it is still very viable against very high armor teams. If you were then looking for pure damage you could even go for a Ginsu's. It's not something I like to do too often on Vayne but it is a fun build to go for and your damage is going to be pretty absurd. Then finally we have the Maw. If you're against a team that has some pretty strong AP assassins then this shield that does proc from it when you take a certain amount of damage can sometimes save your life and it's definitely worth buying. For my example full build however I take that core build, add the Berserker Greaves and then get the Mercurial Scimitar and the Guardian Angel. It is a more defensive build because of the Mercurial Scimitar and the Guardian Angel but it's very very strong on Vayne because she already does an absolute ton of damage with your core build. You're definitely going to be able to hard carry games with this build and you're going to have some pretty decent defensives as well. And that's everything I've got for AD Carry Vane. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all of my social medias. I do also have a Discord server so if you do need any additional help or you just want to hang out then please feel free to join. We have a lot of people in there and a lot of them love to help anybody who needs it. I also have a second Let's Play channel so if you enjoy Let's Plays please also check out my second channel. 
But other than that, thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, and peace. Going louder.